Welcome to PowerShell Bytes episode four. Today I wanna to talk about the PowerShell commandlet syntax. If you follow me on episode two, I talked about discovering PowerShell commandlets and how you basically can leverage PowerShell to find whatever commandlet you need that's installed on your system. Now the next part of that is understanding how to use that commandlet. And today I'm gonna to specifically cover the PowerShell commandlet syntax and not necessarily the whole PowerShell help system. That would take a lot more than just one video to cover. Now, before I get started, I want to talk about a couple, basically references here, actually one, and exploring that. So if you type in help, basically star, syntax, star, it'll show you all the, um, basically commandlets or about documents with the word syntax. And you can see here, there's one here called about command syntax. And if you basically type help about underscore commandlet underscore syntax. It'll pull up the help document on this and uh, it'll dive pretty deep in understanding the syntax and it's a great reference later on if you forget or a supplemental reference um, after this video. It, I mean it really does dive in pretty deep. Now before <clears throat> I show you the actual syntax in the help document, I want to talk about the command structure because all the commandlets in PowerShell follow this system. You have obviously the name of the commandlet, which follow the verb dash noun uh, naming convention. And I'm going to use, let me see, event log for this demo. Now, your commandlets will have parameters. So some parameters will accept an argument. So an argument can be of different values. This one, for example, accepts a string. So I'm going to type in application. Other um, parameters accept well, no arguments at all. And they are what's called switches. So as a base object is an example of that. And you have other parameters that accept multiple values. They can accept, well, one or many values. So I can do something like this. And those values are separated by a comma. Now, I'm not going to actually run this. But if you kind of look at the structure, this is the basis for every single command out there and different commandlets have different parameters and you can keep building those commands with more and more parameters to get different results or do something different. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up the help documentation on the get event log to take a closer look at the syntax. If I scroll up here, I'm gonna be focusing on this part right here that says syntax. Now just a side note, uh, I'm recording this uh, June 6th, 2016 and currently there are uh, several different bugs in the help system and they show basically some incorrect syntax and I'm going to point that out as I go if you're watching this in the future um, Microsoft will probably have fixed that already uh, they are aware of the issue and they said they'll fix it in the next um, basically update for their help system so back to the syntax the first thing you might notice is well there's the commandlet named and then followed by a bunch of stuff here and that's basically the parameters and the arguments and then you'll see the same thing again. Now what these are called are parameter sets. Uh, what makes a parameter set unique, unique is they must have one or more unique parameter names. So for instance, if you see anything with a dash in front of it, that is the parameter name. You'll see that the log name parameter does not exist in the second parameter set. You'll also notice that the second parameter set has two parameters as string and list that does not exist in the first parameter set. And that's what makes it unique. Unique, And basically, if you're using this parameter set, you can only use these parameter names that are listed here. So as string, information action, list, and so on. And the same thing goes for the first parameter sets. You can't mix, uh, mix and match these parameters across these parameter sets. That's something that can trip some people up when they're beginning. Now, as I said, if they have a dash in front of them, that is the parameter name. Now, some parameters have accept an argument or sometimes arguments. And you can identify these by the angle bracket in front of what's the angle brackets here. And what's inside of them is what's called the value type. It's what the parameter, what's the argument accepts. So the parameter log name accepts an argument of value type string. So I can type, for instance, uh, log name. Um, application because the application is a string. If I use the after parameter here, I must 
give it a date time value. If I use the newest parameter down here, I must give it an integer, which is, well, a number. Now, one thing you might notice that I kind of skipped and ignored is you'll see, for instance, the instant ID parameter here has an argument of integer type 64, so it's a number. But you'll see these square brackets right next to it. If you see these right next to the value type, that means that that parameter accepts one or more values. So basically followed by a comma, comma separation. And I'll demonstrate that in a second. Now I'm gonna focus on uh, three parameters for a demo here. The first one is log name. So you see that there's the log name parameter and it accepts a string. You'll see the instance ID, which accepts uh, one or more values of integer type. And you'll see the newest parameter again accepts one or more integer, or actually, the as I was, the newest parameter accepts only one argument, and it must be an integer, and that again is a number. So let me go here, hide that. Let me clear my screen. Get event. Let's say get event log. I'm gonna get a log name, which accept a parameter of string application and I'm using the uh, PowerShell ISE which auto completes this stuff and makes it a lot easier if you're using a PowerShell console it's not going to be quite so easy and it won't show you all this helpful information so the instance ID it even tells you here it accepts multiple values so I'm gonna go ahead and type in say 1 and 0 and we'll go ahead and use the newest and give it an, an integer of 2 so hopefully you can kind of read what's going on here. I'm going to get an event log with a log name of application. I'm going to pull up any uh, log name as long as the instance ID is 1 or 0. And I'm only going to pull the latest two. Now in the help documentation, there's things called a definition, which I'm not going to look at, which basically will give you a brief description on all these parameters and tells you basically exactly what they do. But kind of looking at their name, a lot of times you can figure out what they're going to do anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the help documentation back up and look at the syntax. Now the next kind of part you'll see is, well, there's some of these parameters that don't have an argument. You'll notice here there's one and here. These are what's called a switch because they don't accept the value type. They don't accept an argument. Now the next, probably the most confusing part, I think, at least when I was learning, of the syntax is all these square brackets. You'll see them all over the place. And the key really is to just focus on one part and then, and then expand on that to understand that. So we're gonna take a look at this uh, after parameter here. I'm gonna focus on the square brackets around it. So if you see anything surrounded by square brackets, that means it's optional. So this, the parameter name and the argument here is all surrounded by square brackets. What that means is that parameter is optional. And you'll notice I never use the after uh, parameter. So basically, when I use this parameter set, I don't have to use that parameter. Now, the other thing you might notice is the square brackets here around this argument type. That is a bug. That is incorrect documentation. That's a bug in the help system that's generating this. And um, arguments, as to the best of my knowledge, if, an ar if a parameter accepts an argument, you must give it an argument. They are not optional. But this current documentation I have is incorrect. I do want to point that out. So there are a little more square brackets than normal, which is, makes it a little bit more confusing. But well, you'll notice over here in log name, there's the parameter name and the argument. They are not surrounded by square brackets. That means that this parameter is not optional. If I try to run get event log without this and just hit enter, it would actually prompt me for a log name. If you notice everything else in this parameter set, in this first one here, they are um, optional, meaning I only have to give it the first parameter name. Um, I only have to give the first this uh, first parameter, which is the log name. Everything else here is optional. Now, you probably were thinking, well, I see square brackets right here. <clears throat> notice this, the parameter name and the argument is a parameter. This right here is just the parameter name. What that means is this parameter name is optional. This is what's called a lot of times as a positional parameter, meaning if I type get event log and then type application, I don't have to supply this log name because it's the first position. Um, it's the first parameter. And so since if I supply the basically a string, it'll work. 
If you look at the one right next to it, there's a lot of square brackets. Again, the square brackets around argument ignore because that is incorrect. I want you to focus on is the one right here around the parameter name. Again, that means that parameter name is optional, which is a positional, basically it's called a positional parameter. And the thing about positional parameter, you have to use them in the sequence. So if I don't give a name, I can basically type in get event log, a log name, and then an instance ID, and I have to do it in that order. I can't swap those. And I'll show that in just a second. The other thing you'll notice, obviously this whole thing's surrounded by square brackets, meaning, well, that parameter as a whole is optional. So let me just give a demonstration to make that a little bit more clear. Get event, I can type today, give event log. I'm gonna say, I don't need to put um, the log name. I'm just gonna type in application, because that's an event log, and I'm going to type in zero an integer. I'm also going to use the newest to limit the results here. Now this worked because the first positional parameter, the first one I, uh, basically the first argument I supplied was for the log name and the second one was for the instance ID. Now this worked, but what will, what will not work is if I do this. If I say move that zero in front, this will throw an error because PowerShell is expecting the first to be the log name and it's expecting the second one to be um, a instance ID with a value type of um, an integer. So obviously application, that's a string, not an integer, so it actually throws an error here. So that will not work. Now what will work, and I actually was not aware until I started uh, basically preparing to do this video, is you can actually put named parameters in front of this. So I can type in newest two, and this will work. Uh, let me see, oh, well I gotta fix the order first here of the um, positional parameters. Now this will work because I provided a name, so PowerShell knows to use this parameter, and the first uh, parameter I used without a name, application, is a string that matches with the log name, and the second one is an integer which matches with the instance ID. So this works. Now this is, a, hopefully I didn't lose you here. This is a little bit confusing sometimes, but it's, you can start to break it down. Um, basically, if they're positional parameters, basically where you don't have to include a name, they must be in that order. So first has the log name followed by the instance ID, and if there are more later on, they have to follow that order. Now general rule, I really don't use positional uh, parameters past like one. I might use get event log application, but if there, I don't keep on using um, positionals parameters throughout without naming the uh, the parameter. It just makes it a little, a little bit more confusing. Now the only other thing I th think is probably worth covering right now is the um, curly braces here. You'll notice this on some PowerShell commandlets, and basically what this is. Oh, but I didn't lose, oh, there, it is. there it is, okay. You'll see within these curly braces, there is error, information, failure audit, success audit, and warning. Basically tells me when I use this parameter right here, I have these choices, and that's the only choices I have. So I can type in, let me clear the screen, get event log, uh, log name, actually I don't even have to do that, I can just type in application here and event uh, entry type, uh, error, warning, and I'll just pick the latest two. Now this will basically only show me the war the latest um, two warning or errors. Uh, it, only, it only pulled up warning because that was the most recent um, event logs here. But what I cannot do is supply a name that's not in that set. I type in that, it'll actually throw an error and it'll tell me exactly why. It basically says E does not exist in the set, error, information, failure audit, success audit, or warning. It uh, basically tells me exactly what I'm doing wrong, which is nice. Now, hopefully I didn't confuse you too much. This is, at least in my opinion, one of the hardest things to grasp your head around if you're not used to it. But if you start breaking all these pieces one by one, and looking at what's in square brackets, understanding that that's basically is optional, and understanding that everything in angle brackets is an argument, 
um, you can really start understanding the PowerShell syntax. So in future episodes, I'll start tackling more of the PowerShell help, help system, but I hope I kind of clarified it a little bit if you've never seen syntax before. But again, go check out the about underscore commandlet or command underscore syntax documentation, and it will give you a lot more information. Thank you.